As we noted in an earlier episode in this series, that John and other prophets saw the future unfold before their eyes, presumes that the future is, in a sense, already past. Although time has been debated by scientist and philosopher, almost universally it is defined as a sequence of events and their intervals, which are ordered and measured. Whatever we may think about the debates on time, whether it is the relativistic time-space of Einstein, or the classical realism of Newtonian time, or the debate of whether time actually exists or not, we live in a world where time is measured and discrete events are sequenced. On a daily basis, we run our lives according to a sequential schedule. On a larger scale, we order history along a sequential timeline. Yet, if the claims of the prophets, such as John the Revelator, are true, that they have seen the future as it will be, then our notion of sequential time must be reconsidered. However an event-driven notion of time may be useful in our daily lives, it may not apply in ultimate reality. The implication of precognition, prophetic or scientific, is that there is no past, present, or future. Or, more precisely, the artificial concepts of past, present, and future are merged into one, the present. Dean Radin made the point that psychic abilities, or psi, are independent of space and time. Radin believes that perceptual psi, including precognition, clairvoyance, and telepathy, are merely forms of precognition. As Radin suggests, psi is independent of space and time, then time becomes essentially irrelevant. There is no future, present, or past. Therefore, precognition is not really seeing the future, it is seeing an unbounded present. The scriptures are clear on this point. The Lord repeatedly says that everything for him is in the present. Joseph Smith taught the same principle. While instructing Elder Orson Hyde in Ramos, Illinois, Joseph stated that the angels live with God on a planet that is a great Urim and Thummim. The planet allows all those who reside on it to see the past, present, future at all times. Joseph certainly would be in a position to know, since he had both seen the vision of God the Father and his angels and had used a seer stone. Scriptures speak of God's divine precognition as the foreknowledge of God. God is said to know the future. This is not simply an ability to predict the future. He knows it because he has already seen it come to pass. 
All things are before him as he lives upon a Urim and Thummim in an everlasting present. The Apostle Peter says, for example, that the Savior was slain by wicked hands according to the foreknowledge of God. An implication of the foreknowledge of God is that he knows in advance who will be the elect and who will not, meaning who will be faithful to the commandments and who will not be faithful. This foreknowledge of God includes such details as to which priesthood office a man or woman may hold in this life. The exceeding faith and good works which earn the ordination are generally assumed to be past deeds performed in the premortal existence, but it is more likely that they are future deeds in mortality which God has seen would occur. God's precognitive knowledge of the future with regard to individuals constitutes what we call foreordination. To foreordain a prophet or priesthood holder can be considered a formal and ritual recognition of what has already taken place in the future.